male and female to become gurus, to become initiating spiritual masters. I personally am not against female Diksha Gurus. I personally saw the movement grow and I saw how the ladies played a big role in pushing book distribution. They would distribute more books than men and doing deity worship in the temples and doing cooking in the temples. So if they were able to do service, and we took their service, what's the harm if they get recognized? I support the uh, present GDC decision on uh, authorizing a lifestyle of girls. Prabhupada would make his female disciples give lectures. Prabhupada, did, every day we listen in our temple, Govinda Mahadi Purusam. That was recorded by a woman, Yamna Mataji. And Prabhupada played in every temple. I think so. Prabhupada had said that these are not ordinary women, these are Vaishnavis, they're something special, and they're not less than their male counterparts. We passed that resolution because Srila Prabhupada clearly mentioned that he wanted his disciples, all his disciples, male and female, to initiate. Now the general feeling was that Prabhupada so clearly mentioned that, therefore we should recognize that. The first consideration is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu created a very unconventional spiritual movement. He, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was a revolutionary. And most of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's intimate followers were also revolutionaries. And Srila Prabhupada and his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, were no exceptions. They made many changes to make this movement function properly in this time of the age of Kali. ISKCON is not, in my opinion, a traditional movement. Prabhupada made a lot of adjustments to expand the preaching. Lord Chaitanya taught that Kila Vibhra Kivanyasi Sudhukyaninoy Jai Krishna Tata Veta Seguruhoy at Zanlana regardless of whether a Brahman or a Sanyasi or even a Sutra for that matter, anyone who knows the science of Krishna, they are a uh, qualified to be a guru. One of the major revolutionary steps that Srila Prabhupada took following his spiritual master's arrangements 
is to establish an institution to continue the mission. Prior to that, it was more of a personality-based uh, arrangement. Like for example, a guru naturally had an ashram and when the guru retired, he handed the ashram over to one of his chosen disciples as his successor. However, while Iskon is Sri Prabhupada's ashram, Prabhupada did not do that. Prabhupada did not hand the institution of Iskon over to a chosen disciple to become his successor. Rather, he retained his position as the head of the spiritual institution as the founder Acharya. Founder Acharya is actually a revolutionary concept. Now, it is also true a spiritual institution needs a spiritual head. And Srila Prabhupada solved that equation, fulfilled that need by remaining the head of the institution, Iskon which is his ashram as the head of the ashram forever or as long as the ISKCON institution would last. And that is why we are seeing in ISKCON we have this system of Srila Prabhupada being worshipped in every temple by everyone every day during the Guru Puja. That clearly indicates that Srila Prabhupada is the Guru the guru of the institution of ISKCON for all time. Now, when we recognize that Srila Prabhupada is the guru, then we are, in that light, we have to recognize that the initiating spiritual masters in ISKCON are playing a relative role. For example, I became an initiating guru in ISKCON. When ISKCON approved it, when ISKCON institution wanted it, I started to give initiation. And if tomorrow, if the GBC tells me to stop giving initiation, I have to. So this shows that I am not functioning as a guru on my own right. I am playing a relative role in relation to the institution of ISKCON. Therefore, my role here is as Srila Prabhupada's representative, I am giving initiation. Had I had my own ashram, I could have been the absolute head of the institution. But ISKCON is not my ashram, ISKCON is Prabhupada's ashram and I am functioning in this ashram. Therefore, I am playing a relative role here. That makes Another point, generally a guru acts as a via medium between his disciples and Krishna. Of course, the disciplic succession is there, but the understanding is there that the guru acts as a via medium between his disciples and Krishna. But because we are functioning within the institution of ISKCON, representing Srila Prabhupada, we have to recognize that we are functioning as the initiating spiritual master, as the via medium between our disciples and Srila Prabhupada. So that is the clear understanding that should prevail in our movement. Now, when we represent, then our roles become simplified. Otherwise, the Guru's role is very exalted. In a way, we are seeing also in ISKCON, the tendency is that you have to be exceptionally exalted spiritual personality in order to become an initiating spiritual master in ISKCON. But... <clears throat> If we recognize that we are playing the role as Prabhupada's representative, then that role will become much more simplified. Just as 
to be a proprietor of an institution or proprietor of an organization is one thing. But an agent of an organization is another thing. Say, for example, say Sony. To be the proprietor of Sony, it is an extremely exalted personality. But to be an agent of Sony products is not that difficult. So in ISKCON, if we recognize that we, the initiating spiritual masters, are the agents of Srila Prabhupada, the representatives of Srila Prabhupada, our roles in ISKCON as spiritual master will become a lot more simplified. Then the Vaishnavis can become Diksha Gurus, the second generation devotees can become Diksha Gurus, third generation become, can become Diksha Gurus. So it will become so much more simplified. I mean, the Vaishnavi Diksha Guru is your. Some of the arguments against was that it's not part of the Varnashram culture. And they gave the reference that the mother of Dhruva Maharaj could not initiate him because she was his mother and a woman. At the same time, the problem was that uh, uh, 500 years ago, uh, at the time after Lord Chaitanya, Janla Devi, she became an Acharya and she was a, uh, a Vaishnavi uh, Diksha Guru, as far as we know. There are many, uh, there's a farm bra from her that uh, so naturally she gave the Pancharatic initiations. And uh, not only that, it was that uh, Shasta tells us we should follow the spiritual master. And Prabhupada on various occasions had instructed that uh, he wanted his men and women disciples who had the Bhaktivedanta degree to continue the uh, parampara by giving initiation. He also told that there would be Diksha girls in the future who are ladies. Ultimately, we have to follow the guru also. That's not only part of the uh, parampara system, but that's, that's a, a mention in all the scriptures. So how can we discount this instruction of Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada did not mention it just casually. He mentioned it very clearly during his fast puja. So obviously Prabhupada meant it. And it is now our responsibility to pursue that desire and fulfill that desire of Srila Prabhupada. I don't think that according to all these references, we should restrict anyone from being a girl. There may, may not be many such qualified personalities, but anyway, if someone is qualified, they shouldn't be restricted from being a Diksha girl just because they're in a female body. I don't see that that's the Lord Chaitanya's uh, culture. Maybe some a different culture, but it's not Lord Chaitanya's culture. Let them become initiating spiritual masters. And uh, after all, the selection of course is going to be quite uh, stern. And only the qualified Vaishnavis will actually assume that role. You know, it's a decision based on time, place, and circumstance. In some parts of the world, they may not feel they're ready yet, or they not feel that they should have a lady, a girl, rather than forcing them to accept 
Uh, we gave the uh, option that in each continent, each nation, they can choose whether to uh, nominate someone or not. Now, uh, that may not be a, a principle that is absolute, but it's the principle based on unity and diversity. I believe that Prabhupada would permit an exceptionally qualified female disciple to be a guru. But we will all ultimately accept what the GBC body decides. The GBC body has acted very maturely. This topic has been on the table for nearly 17 years. It says that in the resolution that in any case, the, the, the lady doesn't have the same requirements as the man. That arguing that this is a Western egalitarian. It's not like that. The lady has to always be under the protection of someone. So he's under the protection of her husband or son or someone. But that's not required for the men. So this argument that it's the same standard is not true. Actually, uh, the standard is adjusted slightly. But the argument that, like, say, in India, or in Bangladesh or so, they have uh, lady prime ministers, chief ministers, while in America, they never elected a, uh, a woman president. But that doesn't mean that spiritually, if a lady is qualified, why she can't be a guru. I'm just, you know, I don't see the logic. We have to see, you know, to keep the unity if someone doesn't want, and we don't want to force them. For all these reasons, and some more also, I think I, I support the uh, present GDC decision on uh, authorizing uh, Vaishnavi Diksha Gurus. Why should we create this dissension among ourselves over a simple issue like that? Srila Prabhupada mentioned that nothing can harm this movement from outside. It is from only from within that this movement can be destroyed. So let us protect this wonderful arrangement that Srila Prabhupada made to continue Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching all over the world for a long, long period of time to take it to every town and village. So we have to function together with the spirit of unity. Srila Prabhupada also clearly mentioned that our love for him will be shown by when we cooperate with each other. So let us avoid all possible dissensions among ourselves, discords among ourselves, and create the proper unity with proper understanding. Thank you all very much. Our glory is to Shri Prabhupada.